So my name is Jacqueline Robidoux. I'm a Marine Extension Associate with Maine Sea Grant. Um, and what that kind of means is I'm a seaweed specialist. So I get to work with seaweed farmers, researchers, students, um, pr product producers, all different kinds of people to work on the development of the new seaweed sector in the state of Maine. My name's Gretchen Greeby. I'm an aquaculture and environmental scientist. I work for the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. So I'm interested in seaweed because I am really interested in what we can do to improve and maintain the health of our local waterways and seaweed is really good at remediating nutrients and keeping erosion at bay. My name is Carrie Byron. I'm an associate professor at the University of New England in the School of Marine and Environmental Programs. So in order for kelp to grow, it's actually a pretty basic set of environmental conditions. Um, kelp grows under the water, so you need uh, ocean water. You also need sunlight as it's a photosynthesizer. And then you need uh, nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and other building blocks of the kelp that are contained in the water. So seaweed is similar to a plant in that it photosynthesizes. And I think that's the biggest reason why people oftentimes think that seaweed is a plant. So you can think, you know, it's also taking sunlight um, and nutrients and turning that into its structure and energy. Um, how seaweed is different from a plant though, is seaweed doesn't contain any of those typical plant-like structures. So things like flowers, roots, shoots, stems, um, actually the entire piece of seaweed is absorbing nutrients at the same time. So there's no like transport systems. Um, it's a much more basic form of, of energy, but in some ways is also more complicated. So the different parts of a seaweed do depend on the species, um, but I'll explain a kelp because that's kind of what we're talking about here. So the bottom of a kelp, and this is in all species actually, is called the holdfast, and that is the part that anchors it onto a rock or a shell or a piling. Um, from there we have the stipe, which is kind of like the part that people would call a stem, and that transfers into the blade. So the blade is going to be that really long, like thin undulating section. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. A few other parts of the kelp that I think we should add in here are the sorus tissue, and that's gonna be the area where the seaweed is actually forming spores. That doesn't happen all the time, but seasonally you will see it. So it's gonna be marked by a dark streak on the kelp. Seaweed provides habitat and food for many marine organisms. So things like uh, crabs and snails and sea urchins and sea stars and slugs all feed on seaweed. And then there are other organisms that feed on those animals, things like um, lobsters and uh, pollock, fish and cormorants and um, seagulls and seals, all of those larger carnivorous or omnivorous animals feed on the smaller animals that are feeding on seaweed. So seaweed is sort of the foundation of that ecosystem. An ecosystem is an area where multiple organisms interact with each other and the other parts of the environment around them. So here we're looking at the Gulf of Maine and specifically Casco Bay within the Gulf of Maine, and those are both ecosystems. Ecosystems can be large too, like the Atlantic Ocean. So it just depends on sort of what scale you want to talk about and how many organisms you want to include in that, how much area you want to include. One of the best things that it does is provide habitat and food for other marine organisms. But some of the things that you might not see and might not be as apparent that are happening all the time is that it's also providing protection against coastal erosion and damage from waves during big storms. So it's actually helping to prevent sediment from moving off of our beaches and off of our cliffs into the water. Seaweed can remediate excess nutrients in the water column 
And we're starting to learn too that seaweed can play a role in creating a buffer against ocean acidification. You know, ecosystem services are benefits to humans on this planet. There's a lot of benefits that seaweed provide and specifically there's four types of ecosystem services, regulating, supporting, provisioning, and cultural. Right, those are the four types of ecosystem services and seaweed participates in many different ways in all four types of those ecosystem services. One of the benefits that a lot of people are talking about right now is seaweed's participation in carbon cycling and carbon management. So during that process of photosynthesis, the seaweed is utilizing that carbon dioxide either in our atmosphere, in this case dissolved into the, in the ocean water. And so anytime we can have carbon being utilized in these natural cycles and processes, that's less carbon that we have in our atmosphere contributing to warming. Supporting ecosystem services are things like um, habitat provisioning or biodiversity. Right? So um, seaweed grows in beds or forests, some people call them, and that provides a really rich habitat for all sorts of other fish and crustaceans like crabs and lobsters and, and other organisms that live in the ocean. So it's a really important habitat former for wildlife in the ocean. A different type of ecosystem service is uh, provisioning and that's when us humans take that seaweed and use it for something else we need, whether it's food or fertilizer or pharmaceuticals like drugs or cosmetics like makeups and moisturizers. So seaweed has all sorts of different uses for us humans, and when we extract that seaweed for those uses, that seaweed is providing for us. So that's an example of a provisional ecosystem service. And then the fourth and last type of ecosystem service is a cultural ecosystem service. And cultural ecosystem services describe us, our human relationship with the environment. Uh, and some people very much value seaweed. You know, it's just not slimy and icky, right? It has lots of benefits and some people really appreciate it. So whether you're a harvester or a farmer growing that seaweed to take to market to make money, whether you like to kayak or scuba dive just because you think it's pretty and you, you enjoy that environment and being in that space, that's another um, example of a cultural ecosystem service. Anything that might be tied to recreation or tourism or just somebody's sense of place are other examples of cultural ecosystem services. Without seaweeds, it would probably it would be very sad and it probably I would imagine the ocean would look kind of like a pea soup. Um, you got to remember that seaweeds are the primary producers uh, in the ocean and so they are responsible for cleaning the water, providing habitat, and really just like regulating um, the oceans. Without seaweeds in the oceans, it would kind of be like the world without trees. Um, be a kind of dark place. <laughs>